Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In case you already don't know, I'm disabled. Hi. <laughs> I was diagnosed with a form of spina bifida called myelomeningocele at birth and I have just been living with it for the past 22 years. <laughs> my disability hasn't really affected me throughout my life, um, especially while growing up. My parents have always been very supportive and they were not the kind of people to be like, oh my god, you're so strong, you are so capable, you're stronger than other kids. If I was weak, if I would fall down, they would obviously comfort me, but they would not say that I'm stronger and lie to my face, which has been done a lot to me as an adult actually and it's so pathetic but yeah basically these kinds of reactions all stem from a primary instinct many people tend to have and that is pity <coughs> pity is something that has really affected my life as an adult it actually more than it makes me feel sad about my situation it has happened to piss me off and that is mainly because in azerbaijan there is this stigma that if you're disabled you have to sit at home because if you are disabled physically you are probably mentally disabled and incompetent as well or you're a beggar because usually people on wheelchairs tend to beg for money on the streets in azerbaijan if you have been following my content you would know that I am not someone that just likes to have a video of me just talking to the camera. I always like to include articles, pictures, videos, and any kind of interactive media around my videos so that you guys can have more to look at and also it's aesthetically pleasing. And the best way I thought of doing this is by relating my idea of pity in the dating game to this book that was recommended to me by my therapist. The book is called Beware of Pity by Stefan Zweig. The novel was published in 1939, so you might be shocked as to how am I relating a book that was published way back then to modern day 21st century society. Trust me, many of the feelings expressed in the book by the guy that was feeling pity towards the girl is similar to 98% of the guys I have come across in my dating life. I shit you not. Before I get into that and how it has affected me and my dating life, I want to give you guys a brief summary. I'm not gonna include spoilers because surprisingly many people have not heard of the book. But I'm going to be taking out the main part of how pity was expressed in this book but this is not a book review i am mainly doing this just to relate it to my dating life the book starts off with introducing this guy known as anton hofmiller who is the main character in the book he is a military officer that has been invited by this aristocrat to a party. While he's at the party, he notices this girl sitting down with two other women. So he goes up to her to offer her to dance with him. And she breaks down in tears because she can't stand up because she's disabled. And because of the embarrassment he feels, he runs away from the party and he just thinks that oh my god people are gonna gossip about me what the fuck did i do blah 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 the next day he gets a letter from the girl and she expresses to him that she would like to meet him and because of her message he spends time with her they get to know each other and a friendship blooms between the two of them eventually as he spends time with this girl whose name is edith he understands that she was once able-bodied she could walk, she was actually a dancer, but she had some kind of accident that I don't really remember at the top of my head. And basically that led her to be crippled. Throughout um, Hofmiller's time with Edith, Hofmiller starts feeling sorry for the family as they start getting closer towards him and they start telling him things about Edith. He starts feeling pity towards this girl rather than liking her for the normal functioning human being that she is. He learns that she is paralyzed from, from her lower body down 
and he, they are not sure if there was a cure for that at the time but basically Edith's father tells um, Hofmiller that there is a doctor that they have found that has been helping her and has been getting her to do her physiotherapy and everything which she hates doing and Edith's character is someone extremely emotional. She gets into fights with Hofmiller like throughout the book like in, there were a couple of instances where they got into altercations. The final altercation they got into led her to kissing him. He was woken up by Edith's father um, who said that Edith would commit suicide if he would not agree to be with her and Edith's father asks him to marry Edith and he said I will only marry her if she gets better. Now that is where I'm going to stop with the summary because I want you guys to read the book for yourselves but basically throughout the book you will see the amount of distaste of Miller starts to show towards Edith after she confesses that she loves him. He starts feeling ashamed that he made someone like her fall in love with him. He starts feeling angry at himself as if he had committed a huge crime. I have had conversations with guys I have met up with and then like a couple of dates later they would just be like yeah you know it wasn't working out they wouldn't give me like a fully fledged answer as to why it wasn't working out and many of them would still insist and be like no Anjana you're you're a great girl you're really pretty you're really smart you're cool to hang out with but yeah I, I, I just don't feel it and yes some people might actually just not be attracted to me but many of the times i am brought back to the thought that is it because of my disability and are people way too kind to actually tell me the truth last year i was introduced to this guy who was a mutual friend of mine and he basically told me that hey i love your art i love your style you're so beautiful and the usual shit that guys usually approach me with and we basically got talking it was late at night one day we were chatting and he told me that hey Anjana, i want to ask you out on a date and we hadn't met at the time in person all we were doing was chatting I want to take you out on a date, um, please let me know when you're free. And I was like, oh yeah, sure, I'll be free at so and so time. But just to make sure and just to be clear, I want to mention that I am on a wheelchair. I don't know if our friend told you about it, but I'm letting you know. And this guy was like, oh, really? Are you? I'm so sorry and blah, blah, blah. Like you kept on going about how apologetic he was towards me being born the way I was. <laughs> And one of the first questions he asked me that still makes my skin crawl but I low-key um, sweep it under the rug because I don't like to think about how disgusting men can be. <laughs> he was like, so if you're disabled, how do you have sex? Anyways, so basically our conversation progressed and the guy seemed like he was pretty into me. And I was like, okay, anyways, well, it's time for me to sleep. We'll talk tomorrow. He was like, yeah, cool, cool. We go uh, to sleep. I wake up in the morning. I see there's no text from him. I wait till afternoon. I text him. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And he was like, um, yeah, Anjan, actually need some time to think about us. So I was like, okay, like, what, what do you want to think about? And he was like, well, uh... I'm an Aries and my ex was a Sagittarius so I'm not sure if our um, relationship will work out based off my previous experience with the same zodiac. Yes, a guy fucking said that to me. And I was like, bitch what? Like I am a fucking ride or die. I am probably the best you will fucking get. Why would you say that? And he was like, no, I, I just need some time. Like, I need some time to think because, like, I'm a really rude guy, you know? Like, you know, I swear when an Azeri guy doesn't want to get with you, he'll probably pull out the I'm a rude guy kind of statement from his ass. Ugh, fucking hurt it 
so many times I'm gonna rip this fucking diamond off my fucking eye right now just because I'm so annoyed at people he said that and I was like okay dude like I need time from away from you as well right now and two day two weeks pass I remember and back then I published my tinder video and I was sending it to everyone in my Instagram um, DMs and I sent it to him as well even though we didn't speak for two weeks and he finally texts me he's like hey Anjana go on whatsapp and I was like okay sure yeah go ahead and I thought he would actually say something about the video and he was like Anjana I have to tell you something I was like okay go ahead he was like the reason I didn't want to date you was not because you're a Sagittarius but because you're disabled I'm sorry but at least I'm telling you the truth right now <gasps> Please keep in mind, I was 21, this guy was like 24 or 25. A 25 year old grown ass fucking man said these words to me, texted me these words. A 25 year old grown ass man. I got that message. I sent him to hell like any normal functioning human being would. He insisted to still stay in my life as a friend because I'm a nice person and I told him to go fuck himself. I blocked him. I blocked him and I called my friend Ayan and I bawled on the phone for quite a bit as it made me reflect on the previous guys I had dated in the past. I started to think, okay, yeah, that guy I went on a date with once told me that he didn't want to see me again. And when I asked him why, he said, no, it's just that we're not the same person. Or when a guy once said that, oh my God, Anjana, you're way too emotional after just knowing me for two weeks. It started to make me realize that, okay, so all of these guys probably felt that way. All of these guys probably thought they could date me, but then as they see me in person, they thought, oh my god, I have to push her wheelchair from time to time. She can't stand up. How do I dance with her if I want to? Because I swear Azari guys think about this thing. They think about dancing on their fucking wedding on the first date they see a girl. That or they probably think, how am I going to screw her standing up? If you haven't already guessed, I don't mean all Azari guys. I mean the ones I have interacted with. I'm sure some people might still be normal out there. Peace. But whatever they think makes them convinced that they can no longer be with me and again this video is not to get guys to date me or ask me out it's the other way around i am not in a place to date someone i need to work on myself i need to work on my own self-confidence I need to love myself in order to be loved by someone else because I have just been abusing myself with such disgraceful people for the past 8 years of my fucking life because I started dating when I was fucking 16 What a waste! <laughs> I want this video to be on my channel so that you can share it with your friends if you know someone that is in a conflicted situation like this as to they might like someone who might be disabled and they might not be sure whether they should approach them because they are afraid of the responsibilities that may come um, with being with them or they might just be feeling sorry for that in any case hopefully this video might be able to clear out those feelings of doubt they might have in their head but regardless of the situation I hope this video can help you and it gives you confidence as a disabled person or as an able-bodied person to come out and actually date people. Don't be scared of this. There's nothing you have to lose. You literally live once, so get fucked up, man. Like, do it. Just do it. And if you're going to end up with like a traumatic relationship, if you're going to end up with like an abusive boyfriend or girlfriend, or if you're going to end up marrying them and having like a perfectly normal functioning family, good, do that. Because those are things that make us grow. And if it wasn't for these two abusive ass relationships that I had in the past, I would never be how I am, this neurotic person that is out to get what she wants because now all of these shitty experiences have made me want to focus more on my career. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Until next time, bye bye.